Hello there, Laura Worthington here, showing off my latest type release, the Adorn Pomander Smooth Collection and what you can create with it. This is based off of the Adorn Collection and it's inspired by the wedding season, the bride-to-be, and anyone who's in the business of celebrating important life events. There's so much potential when planning a wedding and starting a new life as a couple. I wanted to design a collection that helps make the special day even more meaningful with a typeface collection that will enhance and capture the uniqueness of each individual wedding. This collection not only works wonderfully on wedding announcements, invitations, place cards, menus, and posters, but it also provides a harmonious typographic toolkit for any special event that needs a little something extra to make it even more memorable. I created a wedding invitation to show you how this collection can be used and what it could look like in real life application. Like the original Adorn family on which it's based, Adorn Smooth provides a suite of distinctive typeface designs formulated to complement each other rather than match exactly. Adorn Smooth revisits six faces from Adorn, pomander, serif, slab serif, engraved, condensed, and script catchwords, plus ornaments, banners, and frames in smooth, untextured versions. So now I'd like to show you a demonstration of the invitation I've made using this collection. So I'm in Adobe Illustrator and I made a new document and pulled in some guides on a lock layer. First, let's start by drawing the frame. The first step is to make a new layer and label it frames. Next, select the text tool and draw the, a text box with it that lines up with the guides. Choose the frames font from the menu. I'm using Adorn Frames Smooth, but what I'll be showing here will work the same for any of my other frames fonts, such as charcuterie and boucherie. Go to the type menu and select glyphs. Here's a little tip about using the glyphs panel. You can click this button with the mountain icon to make the thumbnails in this panel larger or smaller. Pick the corner design you want to use. I'm going to go with this one here. Uh, double click to insert the top left frame, then the top right frame, hit return, then put in the bottom left and right corners. And now we have all four corners of the frames in here. Now you'll notice there's a gap between these. What you need to do to fix this is to highlight the frames with your cursor, pull up the character panel, and set the letting or line spacing to be the same point size as the text itself. This is a 48 point, so you set the letting at 48 points as well. Next, we're going to add in the top, bottom, and side pieces to make this frame fit within the text box. So here's a plain top piece. I'm going to double click to insert a few of these in here. And I want a little different top element to be included here for visual interest. So I'm going to put my cursor in the middle of this, highlight it, and replace it with this piece here. Now, for the bottom pieces, which work the same as the top pieces, but they use different glyphs that were designed to be bottom elements, you can see the difference here in the panel. Okay, now let's finish up the side pieces. Place your cursor in the top right of the text box, hit return, and select a left side piece. Space over until you get to the right side of the text box and add a right side piece. Now that we have this section built out, I'm going to take a little shortcut by selecting this entire line with my cursor, copying it, then put my cursor at the end of the text box again, hit return, and paste. I'm going to keep doing this until I get the length of the frame that I want. Now, it doesn't quite fit proportionally here. You'll notice that it's either too short or too long. Well, there's a little trick you can use to fix this. You can tighten up the letting, and I'm going to make this 42 points, and there we go. Now it fits. It's a similar fix if you want to adjust the width of this frame, but instead of adjusting the letting, you would need to adjust the tracking. So what's cool about these frames is that you can make the frame as thick or as thin as you want by simply adjusting the size of the frame elements, and you can stylize it any number of ways by adding in different top, bottoms, and side pieces. So now that we're done with our frames, we are going to lock this layer and make a new layer for the text. I'm going to draw in a text box again and paste in the text. Now I'm just going to highlight the different sections here and adjust the point size and choose what style I want to use first. First I'm going to add in a little bit of ornamentation at the top just to make it a little bit interesting from Adorn Ornaments here. That looks good. I think this first part would look good set in Adorn Engraved. And the names here I want to set in Adorn Pomander. Let's make these bigger. I'm also going to change the word and to Adorn Catchwords. This section I'm going to put in Adorn Engraved as well since it ties into that first line of text. Now, there's kind of a break in the tone of the text here, and you see that this next section is the date. So I think I'm going to put in an ornament that will divide these sections from uh, the Adorn Ornaments collection here. 
All right. With the date, I'm going to use Adorn Pomander again, but this time I want to stylize the text a little more than I did with the names. Now, this part is always an experiment to see what looks good, but it's fun to have all these different choices, and you know, some work better than others. So once you highlight a letter, uh, you know, in this text, you can go to the Glyphs panel and take a look at Show Alternates for Current Selection. It'll give you all different kinds of choices, and from there, you can just kind of double click and insert whichever one you want and see what happens. It's kind of fun to play with. Okay, now we're on to the address. I'm going to use Adorn Serif for this one. So now I have another last piece that I want to put in here, um, reception to follow. And I want to really break up the design and add a little bit more visual interest down at the bottom to kind of match with the top. So I'm going to create a banner and put text inside of there that just simply says reception to follow. So lock the text layer, make a new layer, and name it banner. Draw a text block over the top of this text, and in the Glyphs panel, I'm going to select this element as the left side of the banner, then these pieces for the tops and the bottom of the banner, and this piece right here for the right. Now, you don't have to pick matching sides for the banner. Feel free to experiment. They all work together. I'm going to select the middle of the banner and change the top and the bottom pieces to make this one so it matches with the elements I've used in the frames to kind of pull this all together, make the design a little bit more cohesive. Make another layer on top of that banner and name it banner text. I'm going to type in reception to follow and set it in adorn condensed sans and just move it into place. And that's it. There we have it. Invitation ready to go. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video and be sure to check out my website at lauraworthingtontype.com.